In the Fatima was more of a, and I know I know this isn't the doctrine of the church, but I don't know what your response would be that Fatima was more of a response to the church's sort of way to respond to um, the Cold War. Yeah. Well, it was pre Cold War, but to respond to the communism. Well, how would you you know what would you how would you respond to that? Okay, well let me let me just say about Fatima, uh, it is the message of our of our age. Every pope has said that. Modern books have gone there. And it is still a relevant message. Um, if you read the chapter, and I have some more comments on that too, uh, the, the part of the chapter actually that Dr. Miravalli wrote on Fatima, and especially it's it's relevancy for today. Okay, that's how he kind of ended his his uh, chapter on Fatima, quoting John Paul II, Benedict the Sixteenth. Um, yes, it's it's uh, the most relevant message of our time because it's basically the gospel call to conversion, the conversion of sinners, and Fatima began as, um, let me see here, what pages. Um, uh, <coughs> uh, um, <coughs> what page does it start on? 862. 862? Is that where it begins? Yeah, OK. Yes. I had a number of pages marked here. You know, the Fatima apparitions, they actually begin with an angel being sent to prepare for Our Lady. That was in 1916 that the angel of peace, he called himself, and then he called him the angel of Portugal, guardian angel of Portugal, uh, came with um, a message of, of prayer and reparation. Um, on page A63, the, the words of the angel to the three children Jacinta, Francisco, who are now um, beatified, and Lucia. I say Lucia because I, I was in studies with a, a fellow from Brazil, and he says in Portugal we say Lu Lucia, not Lucy or Lucia. I was calling her Lucia. He says, no, it's Lucia. So I said Lucia. Portuguese, we call her. Uh, she's, her cause is, is undergoing or progressing, I should say, as well. She was the survivor for, for decades and decades. Uh, but the angel appeared to the three children, and um, as, as the end of that message, um, in the middle of the page, relates, kneeling on the ground, bowed his head until it touched, his forehead touched the ground, um, made us repeat three times, my God, I believe, I adore, I hope, and I love you. I ask pardon for those who do not believe, do not adore, do not hope, and do not love you. And then instructed the children, pray, the hearts of Jesus and Mary are attentive to the voice of your supplications. There's this theme of the two hearts very prominently right at the beginning of the Fatima apparitions. And um, one of the great, well, I'll just, if you turn to the next page, 864, that last paragraph, this is the angel again appearing to them, and later that same year, in 1916, the second apparition, and um, when they were playing, okay, uh, and he asks, what are you doing? Pray, pray very much. The most holy hearts of Jesus and Mary have designs of mercy on you. Offer prayers and sacrifices constantly to the Most High. The Fatima message is basically a message of prayer and, and sacrifice. And then he goes on to say, make everything you do a sacrifice. Offer to God as an act of reparation for the sins by which he is offended. Supplication for the conversion of sinners. Okay. So, uh, reparation for sin, acts of penance, prayer, it's all for the conversion of sinners. This is the gospel message. This is what the popes have taught over and over and over. 
And again, we see this, um, this theme of the hearts of Jesus and Mary in the second Fatima apparition. And then the third appearance of the angel, uh, probably in the first part of 1917, because by the time uh, Sister Lucia wrote these, her memoirs, it was in the 1940s, and her memory was a little unclear as far as exactly when these things took place. Because she was only nine years old, just <coughs> when she was six and seven. And um, the angel teaches them a great prayer of reparation, which is on page 865, the second full paragraph there. Most Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I adore you profoundly. I offer you the most precious body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ, present in all the tabernacles of the world, in reparation for the outrageous sacrileges indifference with which he himself is offended. And through the infinite merits of his most sacred heart, and the act of heart of Mary, I beg of you the conversion of poor sinners. So it's, it's a prayer offered to the Trinity through the Eucharist and by the intercession of the hearts of Jesus and Mary in reparation for the outrages, sacrileges, by which our Lord is offended in the Eucharist. His most holy body and blood. And those are the principal pre-Marian Fatima revelations and apparitions by the angel. With the Blessed Virgin Mary, it begins in May, May of 1917, and continues every month, except uh, the month of July, um, because in, in July, um, pardon me, it's not July, it was, uh, it was August. Um, August, it was August 19th, because the, the, the three little kids were in, in jail, in prison being threatened to either tell what they were being told by the Blessed Mother, or they would boil in hot oil. They separated them off. <laughs> and these were the Masons. The Freemasons were in charge of, of, of Portugal at the time. And um, all three of them said, nope, we're not saying anything. They separated them. They, they told, I think, I forget who it was. They said, well, one of them was, was already boiled in water or in oil, and we're going to be boiled too, and they said, well, we can't say, which really is a testament to the authenticity of the message, because these people were willing to die rather than reveal what Our Lady had told them, and but she told them not to tell anyone. Uh, but the first Marian apparition <coughs> begins in May of 1917, May 13th. They're all on the 13th except the August apparition. And what is, what's the message every time? Levi, what's the message every time? I don't know. You didn't read it? Okay. No. Okay. Anyone read it? The chapter? Pray what? what? Pray what? The rosary. The rosary. The rosary. Yeah. Pray the rosary daily Confession. and make sacrifices for the conversion of sinners. Confession. That is the message of Fatima. Confession. The conversion of sinners. Pray the rosary, make sacrifices, do penance. Okay. And that was the message in every month. She, she held the rosary up, wanting us to, to pray it. And um, it's the same in, in June. And July is rather significant because, as Dr. Maravelli, this is page 870 and 71. Okay. If you look on page 870, the third paragraph of the message down there, pray the rosary every day to obtain peace, end of the war. And page 871, the third paragraph down, sacrificed herself for sinners. Same many times, especially when, whenever you make some sacrifice, Jesus is for love of you, conversion of sinners, in reparation for sins committed against the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And then they saw a vision of hell. This is one of the secrets. They saw the vision of hell. It's vividly described. Okay. Um, they saw demons plunged in a sea of fire and souls in human form, transparent, burning embers, 
as the souls in human form appeared, blackened or burnished bronze, you know, screeching. Uh, I mean, it was really a horrific apparition. Screams, groans of pain and despair. And the last paragraph there, 871, you have seen hell where the souls of poor sinners go to save them God wishes to establish in the world devotion to the Immaculate Heart. Please uh, be with me. We, how many of you have your books here? These? Yeah. We want yeah. them. Yeah. That's why I'm reading it. I want you to read along because this is uh, it's, it's the most significant message from heaven of our time. It's still relevant, as I'll explain a little later. Okay. So you've seen where hell, where poor sinners go. God wishes to establish devotion to Immaculate Heart to save them. If what I say to you is done, many souls will be saved. There will be peace. The war is going to end, but if people do not cease offending God, a worse war will break out during the pontificate of Pius XI. When you see a knight illumined by an unknown light, know that it is the great sign given you that he is about to punish the world for its crimes by means of war, famine, persecutions of the Church and of the Holy Father. And to prevent this, I shall come and ask for the consecration of Russia to my Immaculate Heart, for a communion reparation on first Saturdays. If my requests are heeded, Russia will be converted, there will be peace. If not, she will spread her errors throughout the world, causing wars, persecutions of the Church. The good will be martyred, the Holy Father will have much to suffer. Various, na various nations will be annihilated. The Holy Father will consecrate Russia to me. She will be converted. A period of peace will be granted to the world. Unfortunately, the doctrine of faith will always be preserved. Dot, dot, dot. We don't know what was said there. Sister Lucy, Lucia, what she called her letter, proper Portuguese name, okay, uh, left that out. And there's all kinds of speculation as to what that means, um, or what could have been said there, okay. Um, and then, if you, if you know the traditional Fatima uh, prayer at the end of each chapter of the rosary, this is where it comes from. Okay? Mm -hmm. When you pray the rosary, say after each mystery, O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those who are most in need of thy mercy. Okay? So, um, as Dr. Miravalli relates on page 873, during 1938, <coughs> Hitler is preparing for war, and um, he occupies Austria in 1938. Anyone ever seen uh, Sound of Music? Okay, yeah. So that's about the German takeover of Austria. And um, on the night of January 25th, the um, he says that in the night sky, um, the the warning of the 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 promised light, okay, this this uh, uh, sign that would be given, um, the European skies are lit up. He calls it an aurora borealis. Actually, it's not. Okay? I went back to the papers, of, of the newspapers of that time, and they said it wasn't an aurora borealis. They didn't know what it was. And people just saw this eerie light. They thought it was some sign, maybe the end of the world. They didn't know what it was, but they were fearful. And Sister Lucia stepped out of her convent, looked out the skies, and said, this is the sign the war is coming, because the message that Our Lady gave wasn't heeded. And uh, well, Dr. Miravalli uh, fast forwards to May 13th of 1981, on that same page, 873, okay. John Paul II is shot significantly on the apparition, the anniversary of that first May apparition by Aliaga. And if you know anything about the, the assassination attempt, one of the bullets, was it more than one bullet? I'm not even sure, I think it was more than one bullet. I think only one bullet. It was only one bullet, okay. But it went through his, uh, his uh, chest, 
and was making its way through soft tissue, this is what the doctor said, to his heart when it just detoured. And it was an unexplained detour because it was going through soft tissue. It should have his, it struck his heart. It didn't. And John Paul II had not read the Fatima third part of the secret. Um, what Our Lady revealed to the children in 1917 were three secrets. She said, do not, do not reveal them um, until whenever uh, you, you, she thought it was appropriate. Okay? And um, one of those secrets was the vision of hell. Um, the next secret was about consecration to her immaculate heart. And in Russia, taking over the world if, if, uh, if the consecration wasn't made. The third part of the secret, which was never revealed until 2000, was um, she sees this man in white. The kids saw this, this vision of this, this man in white who they later realized it was the Pope, making his way through a city filled with carnage, and up a hill where he's, and, and there are bishops and priests and religious dead on this hill, and then he is shot and struck down. Well, John Paul II hadn't read the third part of the Fatima secret until he'd only been pope for about a year. I guess this wasn't a high priority of his, but after he was shot convalescing in the hospital, he says, bring me the third, Secret of Fatima, as it's called, the third part of the secret. Okay. And he reads it and he says, you know, This was supposed to be me. Our Lady preserved my life. I was supposed to have been killed. That's how he interpreted it. It's still open to interpretation. That's not a definitive interpretation. The children saw a pope being struck down dead. Okay. So I think we're open to interpret it as John Paul II, but you're free not to. Maybe another pope who was struck down. Anyway, um, the pope still didn't reveal the third part of the secret until the year 2000, even after he had read it in 1981. And if you know anything about the um, the factions within the Fatima followers, okay. The traditionalists, as you can call them, okay. um, especially those led by Father Nicholas Gruner, who just died uh, recently, okay. they have always asserted and still assert that the third part of the secret wasn't revealed in full. So um, that's that's their contention. Okay. The Vatican says it was revealed in full. We, we've revealed it, it all. Okay. Um, What's and, the basis in saying it wasn't? Well, I'll just say this. Even Mother Angelica, when she read the third part of the secret, she said, this is it. Ah, no, there's more. And there's something they're not telling us, okay, because they're afraid. Um, so, I mean, there are people that are, you know, have, have you could say, uh, Reasons for doubting. Um, it, is, it seems strange on the one hand. I mean, I've read the arguments of the, the traditionalists. It does seem strange. Okay, after the Holy Father shot, why not just reveal it right away? Okay. In 1960, uh, actually, uh, go back a little bit okay, in history. Uh, during the pontificate of John the 23rd, um, everyone was expecting the Fatima message to be revealed because Sister Lucia had said, I can't reveal it until 1960. So everyone was waiting <coughs> until 1960. And John XXIII chose not to reveal it. And all that was released was a little news blurb. You didn't have the internet back then saying, the Holy Father has chosen not to do this, not to reveal what the message said. It was really a letdown for people because people were expecting this. They had waited for decades and decades, a lot of followers of Fatima throughout the world. I'd say most of the faithful had heard about this and were waiting for 
the, the third part of the secret. Um, why he didn't reveal it, we don't know. I suppose I'd be a little gun shy to reveal it if I were the Pope. But because you're told to reveal it. Well, Sister Lucia later said that she wasn't told she had to reveal it then. She just said she thought this may be an appropriate time, but then when the Pope decided not to, she thought, okay, well, whatever. So there's just some mystery about why it was revealed and then it was revealed in 2000. But even, I mean, I could see why John XXIII or any Pope sitting would not want to reveal it. Because if no Pope has been shot yet, well, if you reveal it, then that gives some, someone even cause to say, oh, I'm going to fulfill the, 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 this, uh, this third part of the secret. You know? I mean, there are a lot of nutcases out there that, that might take pot shots at you. I don't know what the Pope's thinking was. No one knows what the thinking was of the Pope. He didn't reveal it. And that was a great letdown. And between that and the Second Vatican Council, because they were so worried about ecumenism, kind of burying Mary under the rug and not talking about Fatima. Um, it, it resulted in, uh, you could say, a, a real drop in Marian devotion. My contention is, I've read through the periodicals from the Second Vatican Council up through the 60s and 70s. My contention is that devotion to Mary, especially to her heart, maintained its uh, popularity among the faithful, even though not as great as before, because of the Fatima message. That's what kept Mary devotion alive, the Fatima message. But it's even a mystery to me why John Paul II, after he was shot, didn't reveal it. Why not just reveal the message? It seems strange. And one of the reasons why the traditionalists, and not just traditionalists, but even Mother Angelica, okay, um, why they, they maintain that all the message wasn't revealed is because, going back to page 872, where it says, in the end, the Immaculate, my Immaculate Heart will triumph the Holy Father will consecrate Russia. She will be converted in Portugal. The dogma of faith will always be preserved, dot, dot, dot. Portugal dogma of faith always be preserved, dot, dot, dot. Uh, well, the, the people who disagree that we got the full part of the message in 2000 say, this is where it's hidden in what Sister Lucia didn't say here and the Vatican didn't reveal to us. Um, and you could say the, and the argument goes like this, okay? Um, because I spoke with Father Gruner myself and asked him this. I happened to meet him when I was just starting my dissertation work, and I was going to deal with the Fatima issue. I did. And I, I was in Fatima making a retreat um, with a priest friend of mine who just died, Father Ben Rees, um, six months ago. And Father Rees uh, came up to me and he said, um, Father Gruner is down on the corner passing out information at Fatima. Why don't we go talk with him? I said, good idea. I just sit down with him and pick his brain. Okay, so I, I invited Father Gruner to lunch. He sat down with us at lunch. And um, I said, OK, um, you're saying that the third part of the, the secret wasn't revealed in full. Okay? This was back in 2003 or four it was when I was in Fatima. I think it was 2004. And, um, and he said, yes, he says, because I think the, the message of Fatima, the third part of the secret, deals with the faith being attacked and, and um, not being preserved. And I said, well, what makes you think that? And he links it, and the traditionalists do too, to the Novus Ordo Mass. Okay. And the drop in faith amongst the faithful uh, as a result of the new mass, okay. and, and a drop in the faith, basically. Okay. They say it's linked to the new mass. Our Lady predicted this. Maybe didn't mention the mass specifically, but this is part of it. 
And see, the dogma of faith in Portugal will always be preserved. In other words, it won't be preserved other places. See, that's the implication there. Sister Lucy says, in Portugal, the dogma of faith will always be preserved, dot, 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 and maybe not elsewhere. And Father Gruner and company say, well, the faith has been devastated in many parts of the world since the Second Vatican Council, and this is what our lady was warning against, and the Vatican's embarrassed to say this, that the faith has been damaged because of everything that's happened since Vatican II. Well, the Vatican maintains that the full third part of the message, the secret, was revealed. So you can believe whoever you want. Okay? Uh, there's another theory. There's an Antonio Sochi. He is uh, an Italian um, uh, reporter. He's, he's well known. S-O-C-C-I. He just has a brand new book um, out. Anyway, uh, Mr. Sochi speculated that, um, that, and I think he still holds to this, that the third part of the secret was not fully revealed. And the Vatican could say it was because in cryptic language, they, they basically said uh, that the faith was being attacked and Satan was attacking the church in, in addresses by the popes over the years. So they could, with mental reservation, so to say, uh, say, well, we did reveal all the secret, all the third part of the secret of Fatima, even though it wasn't in the part of the message that was revealed, written down when they revealed it in, in 2000. It was in other papal messages and other papal addresses over the years, and you could look to uh, Paul VI and John Paul II about you know, Satan attacking the church and, and the lack of faith, the drop in faith. They said, if you put the pieces together, this is what the, the third part of the secret was. Anyway, that's speculation. We don't know. Okay. Now, the other contested issue in fact, does anyone know about this? Or am I speaking to all who, who know not what I'm, um, the, the issue is here? Um, OK, it appears that you don't know this. Um, Mary wanted Russia consecrated to her Immaculate Heart okay, by the Pope with all the bishops. And this is the message if you go to, uh, see, after, after the 1917 apparitions, um, well, let's, let's finish up with those first, okay? May, June, July, August, September, October. Okay. In September, the children, because more and more pilgrims are coming now, I mean, thousands and thousands are coming every month because they keep going back on the 13th. <clears throat> and they asked the Blessed Mother, can you give us some sign so that people will believe us next month in October? And Mary says, I will give you a sign. So in October, they come back, and there are 80,000 people present. I think Bervali says 70,000, the, the estimates are 70 to 80,000. And um, the children see our Lady under three images. One is Our Lady of Mount Carmel, holding the baby Jesus, scapular. Another, Our Lady of Sorrows, okay, uh, her sorrowful and immaculate heart. And another vision of Mary and Jesus and St. Joseph, the Holy Family, significantly. They, they see these three images of Mary, okay, Mount Carmel, sorrowful mother, the Holy Family. While they're seeing this, the 80,000 people present are seeing a miracle of the sun. They are seeing the sun start spinning and uh, changing colors and start dancing throughout the sky and then come plunging toward the earth. And this takes place over several minutes. Okay. The atheists and, and um, um, Freemasons are there who are writing for the secular papers to mock what's going on. They see this happen. They can't deny it. They have to report this. They said, we saw this. Okay. Another testament to, oh, by the way, they see the sun come plunging down to the earth. People hit the ground. They start praying. They think the end of the world is coming. And then the sun returns to its normal course. It had been raining all morning. You can, if you ever look at photographs of, of the Covid-Ria, 
right there in, in Fatima, just outside of, of, of the city of Fatima, uh, the town. Um, there are mud puddles all over. People are in rain gear. After the miracle of the sun, as it's called, bone dry, everything. Bone dry. There's not a puddle. There's no moisture. This is after a couple of minutes. So this is a great manifestation of Our Lady's presence. And um, shortly thereafter, within, within a year or two, as Our Lady prophesied, Jacinta and Francisco die. I'll mention one thing about Francisco. Francisco knew he was going to die, and uh, he used to cut school. When the other kids were going to school, he used to say, you go to school, I'm going to go spend time with the hidden Jesus. That's what he called Jesus in the Eucharist. He just liked to sit and contemplate Jesus. Uh, they both died. Sister Lucia went on to become uh, first a Dorothean sister, and then she, she changed and became a Carmelite. But while she was a Dorothean nun, if you look on page 877, um, two significant apparitions. Uh, and these aren't the only ones, the only apparitions given to Sister Lucia. Over the years, Jesus and Mary appeared to her many, many times. There are, 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 there's a good volume. Um, uh, you can get it from, from um, South Dakota, Father Fox's apostolate, Father Robert Fox, not Matthew the Wacky Dominican, who, uh, who was a New Ager. Father Robert Fox, who was a good Fatima promoter up in, in, in South Dakota. Um, they publish a book by Antonio, Father Antonio Martins, of all the, the, um, the documents of Fatima, it's called. It's very good. And um, anyway, the two significant, we really more significant apparitions to Sister Lucia, the first is on December 10th of 1925. And um, Our Lady tells, well, yeah, if you look on page eight, 878, actually, uh, is the great promise thing. Uh, it's the five for Saturday promise. Um, and about the last five lines of that middle paragraph, um, um, where Mary uh, says, look at, well, that whole last, that whole middle paragraph, look, my daughter, at my heart, okay, surrounded with thorns, um, which ungrateful men pierce me at every moment by their blasphemies and gratitude. You at least try to console me, okay? Consoling the heart of Mary. Okay? That's reparation of consolation and say that I promise to assist, okay, this is the promise Mary makes, to assist at the hour of death with the graces necessary for salvation all those who, on the first Saturday of five consecutive months, shall confess, go to confession, receive Holy Communion, recite five decades of the Rosary, and keep me company for an extra 15 minutes besides the Rosary while meditating on the 15 mysteries. So you can meditate on all the mysteries or, or one of them, okay, five of them, for an extra 15 minutes with the intention of making reparation to me. So, misunderstood her heart here because she's talking about her heart surrounded by thorns, okay? This is, this is the five for Saturday promise of Our Lady. And this is complementary to what our Lord told St. Margaret Mary Alico. Whoever should go to uh, Mass, receive Holy Communion on nine consecutive First Fridays, I will assure their, their, uh, they persevere in grace to the end of their lives. Okay? So Mary makes a similar promise with five First Saturdays. And she was, uh, Sister Lucia was asked by someone, why five for Saturdays? And that is actually page 879, okay? Uh, because of the, in general, the categories of offenses committed against Mary's most immaculate heart. Blasphemies against her immaculate conception, against her virginity. See, modern day theologians fall into that category, Catholic ones, so called Catholic ones, okay? Against her divine motherhood. 
Those who publicly attempt to instill in the hearts of children indifference, contempt, even hatred for her immaculate heart, and those who insult her heart directly in her venerated statues and images. Sadly, that was even by some priests after the Second Vatican Council. I know a priest who, who stood up before his congregation with a rosary and ripped it apart and said, we don't pray this anymore. And this is how some priests were formed, especially after the Second Vatican Council. Malformed, I should say. Okay. Well, um, by the way, I have First Saturday devotions in my parish. I've always had them at the parish. We, we um, have mass, um, we'll have confessions, we'll have uh, ex actually exposition of the Blessed Sacrament, pray five decades of the rosary, um, and uh, we do this in honor of Our Lady of Fatima. <clears throat> You do it every Saturday or once a year cycle? Well, no, no, first, first Saturday is every, every month. Yeah. Every single month. Every first Saturday of the month, oh. yeah. Because uh, actually, it, it's the first Saturdays to continue that devotion, even if you've done it five times, that's for your own salvation. That's what Our Lady promises. But Our Lady wants the first Saturday devotion to, to convert the hearts of people. Okay, I'll get to this a little later. The second great apparition to Sister Lucia um, was um, after the December 10th, 1925 apparition. If you turn to page 881, pardon me, I got ahead of myself. It's, um, it's 1929, where is it? Yes, no? um, does he have it here? I thought he did. Um, in, okay, maybe he doesn't have it here. Uh, I thought he had it. Uh, I don't see it. Um, in 1929, Our Lady appeared to Sister Lucia and was specific about the um, consecration of Russia that she wanted the Pope, along with all the bishops in the world, to consecrate Russia to her Immaculate Heart for its conversion. And um, in 1942, when Pope Pius XII consecrated the world to Mary's Immaculate Heart, he did so in part from the request of Sister Lucia who wrote to him. Okay. Now, Pius XII did not consecrate Russia specifically. He consecrated the world to Mary's Immaculate Heart and included a mention of Russia in a kind of a, a nondescript way. That country where the icon of Our Lady is venerated, the icon of Our Lady of Kazan. Okay, that's what he was referring to. He didn't do it with all the bishops throughout the world, and we think maybe things were communicated to him as they should have been. But there's also another factor because um, there was a Portuguese mystic at the time, in the 1930s, early 1940s, named, she's a blessed, Alexandrina. Anyone ever heard of her? Okay. Blessed Alexandrina. She, Jesus appeared to blessed Al Alexandrina and informed her that he wanted the Pope to consecrate the world to his mother's sorrowful and immaculate heart. The Portuguese bishops were aware of both of these revelations, so they wrote to the Pope, and um, that may explain why Pius XII never engaged the world's bishops to consecrate in the consecration prayer that he did. He did it himself. Not with all the bishops throughout the world. That was Our Lady's request at Fatima. Well, in 1951 or 52, Pius XII, by himself, again, consecrated Russia specifically to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. But he didn't do it with the world's bishops. 
why again it was kind of a mystery. We don't know. Okay. Uh, fast forward to 1982. Okay. John Paul II goes to Fatima on May 13th, 1982. And have any of you ever been to Fatima? Okay. You should make it a point to go there sometime. Uh, the place where Our Lady appeared, her statue was set up. There was a crown on our statue, Our Lady's head. Okay. Beneath, in the middle of the crown, the crown is one of those that it's it's uh, not a solid crown. It's it's you know you can see through it, okay, but it's it's got these you know like metal pieces that that are are, are bent and come to a point together in the middle with a with a like a something on top. I forget what it is. I can't remember it right now. But where where these metal bars meet, okay, uh, there is the bullet that went through John Paul. He had it placed in, uh, in the crown of the statue. He goes back one year after the assassination attempt, and he consecrates the world with a veiled reference to Russia with the bishops to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. But the bishops don't cooperate with this. Now, in the previous consecrations by Pius XII, Sister Lucia says, this wasn't done the right way. Russia isn't going to convert. The Pope has to do it with all the bishops. So John Paul II knew this. May 13th, he consecrates the world with a veiled reference to Russia, the country that, I forget what language he used, but everyone knew it, 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 he meant Russia. Okay. Uh, well, most of the bishops didn't cooperate with him. He sent out I don't know what it was, some communicate, but they didn't. And afterwards, Sister Lucia says, it wasn't done because the bishops weren't with him on this. Okay. John Paul II, humbly, he's the Pope, okay? He says, well, I'm going to do this the right way. Two years later, March 25th, 1984, John Paul II, months beforehand, sends out a letter to all the bishops throughout the world saying, I want you to join with me. Okay. And the idea is he needed a moral union. Some bishop, I mean, you had some bishops around the world who were, in 1982, maybe maybe weren't the best bishops, you could say, and most faithful. Maybe they didn't join him, but he had a moral uh, union of bishops throughout the world. Okay? And uh, he consecrated again the world to Mary's Immaculate Heart, um, with a veiled reference to Russia. And after that consecration, <clears throat> Father Robert Fox, great promoter of Fatima, I've been to his shrine up in South Dakota, um, he, he spoke with Sister Lucy and said, was it done? She says, yes. Satisfied our day's request. Gruner and company, they maintain no. It wasn't done because the Pope didn't name Russia. He didn't name Russia specifically. Well, um, it was the Pope's intention to do this, and there was a veiled reference to Russia everyone knew. Um, the Pope didn't do it because of concerns for ecumenism that may get the Russians angry, thinking that, well, we're the only ones that need conversion. You Western world people, you're probably more in need of conversion than us. Okay? I think we're a more decadent country than, than, than uh, Russia right now. I, that's my opinion, really. At least Putin didn't allow the, the, the gay agenda to flourish at the Olympics. He said, no, anyone does this, we're going to arrest them. You're not going to propagandize our youth. Okay? Everyone was moaning and groaning about this. And I was in favor of Putin. Hey, you know, he stood up to the gay agenda. Anyway, um, our world needs conversion. Um, so there's still a debate about whether the consecration was done properly. Okay? That's still out there. Say okay, and uh, <clears throat> you can debate with the the um, traditionalists um, all you want. Okay. Um, the relevance of that of a continuing relevance. Okay, um, Dr. Miravalli, pages 380, 882 and eight eighty three. 884, he, he quotes um, 
actually, 881, he's, he's, he mentions the consecration in, in, on March 25th, 1984. Then um, on page 882, about the middle of the page, February 13th, 2005, Sister Lucia de Jesus of the Immaculate Heart died, age 97. And uh, what's the relevance of the family message for the 21st century? Well, um, you have the Pope dying. You, you have, um, he, he relates the 2000 commentary. When, when they published the third part of the Fatima Secret, they issued a commentary on it as well. And then Joseph Cardinal Ratzinger, okay, he, he said those words that are on the top of 883. prospect of the world being reduced by ashes, a sea of fire, is no longer pure fantasy, okay? Uh, as Pope Benedict XVI, he talked about the crucial historical importance of the unfolding of the Catholic message, okay? And um, how the Fatima message is still important. Uh, I'm just going to read some comments that I put together. On this, on this topic. Um, <clears throat> to bring home the point that the Fatima message is um, still relevant, okay? um, I'll quote here um, Father Joachim Maria Alonso. He was the promoter of the cause for Jacinta and Francisco for many years. He died, um, I think, within the past 15 years. And um, he makes the point um, that devotion, uh, the devotion of reparation that Mary requested five first Saturdays, okay? Actually, to go to Mass on first Saturdays, receive communion in reparation to her Immaculate Heart. He says, this devotion has not only the purpose of individual holiness, okay, for just for people going, wanting to make the five first Saturdays, or whatever, but the special providential purpose of conversion of Russia and the avoidance of evils which result from her non-conversion. Mary prophesied that Russia would spread her errors throughout the world. She said that in 1917, before the Russian Revolution even took place. All this unfolded afterwards. What did Russia do after communism took over Russia? It, Russia spread its errors throughout the world, even to the hemisphere, Cuba, I mean, all over the world. It's many of the communist regimes have fallen since then. But um, that, that message of Our Lady was, was fulfilled very, in a very real way. What Father Alonso says is that the conversion, the real conversion of Russia and this era of peace will be accomplished only by the two conditions that Our Lady set forth. Not only the consecration of Russia to Mary's Immaculate Heart by the Pope and the Bishops in the Union of the Pope, but also the First Saturday devotions. Both of these together um, are needed for obtaining the conversion of Russia. That's what Father Alonso says, okay? the promoter of the cause, who knew the Fatima message very well. And um, he makes the point that, um, um, well, Jesus appeared to Sister Lucia in a 1930 letter she made reference to this. And um, Jesus told Sister Lucia,